Don't date these climbers. They just want to park in your driveway. And they're never gonna leave. I'm not kidding, they're never gonna leave. Y'all know I've talked about this before. Thank you for this comment. I'm gonna read this in case you can't. Had a van man swipe, <laughs> Swipe me on the app with a not looking for anything serious profile, but also said he was hoping to find a driveway he could park in for a few weeks at a time. Like what? Okay, I know this may be hard for people uh, who haven't lived in the whole climbing world. And it's not just climbing, it's surfers and blah, blah. But it's a lot of climbing. I swear these men will literally do not ever let your guy friend or your boyfriend, if he's a climber, leave anything in your house. You will never get that stuff out of your house. These men want a storage unit. They want a place to park their truck. Uh, they want a warm body. They want a place to do their laundry. They want to shower, although they don't seem to care about hygiene all that much. I mean, if you think men, if you think cishet men um, who are like, living with showers and stuff are bad about washing their butthole. Imagine ones who don't have showers. Now I say all this for anyone new here as someone who did live in a truck for many years living this life. But you see the difference between women who live like that and men who live like that is that women don't have the entitlement <laughs> that, that men are just saturated in uh, since the day they were born, that the world is their oyster and that women are for the taking and that our bodies and our labor and our homes and our driveways are theirs. And so anytime I was, you know, I slept in plenty of people's driveways, but usually when I slept in friends' driveways it's because I didn't want to put them out. Like when I would stay with friends when I was on the road living in my truck. Oh, look at you, you rolled on your back, oof. <laughs> anytime I slept in their driveway, um, it was because I was trying to be thoughtful. I didn't want, like I remember when I stayed with a couple of my friends who had worked, who had lived in their trucks before and they were living in Oregon and they were, um, they were married, they had a house now and they would have people like me come through all the time. And they always offer their spare bedroom with a, a futon, like I think it was like a spare bedroom office. And I slept in my truck in the driveway because I didn't want to put them out. I didn't want them to have to change sheets and wash sheets and do all the stuff that has someone in your house um, part of it was because that's part of my burden story. If anyone who's, <laughs> if you've been following me a while, you know that one of my biggest, uh, hardest lessons is to like unlearn this, like I'm a burden to everybody. So I just try to, you know, <laughs> now if somebody wants to host me, I let them because a lot of people take pleasure in that. But uh, um, uh, most men don't think that way. They may have a burden story, um, but because of patriarchy, it's also weirdly twisted up with this entitlement at the same time. Uh, the same way whiteness also has entitlement, has taught me a lot of entitlement that I've had to unlearn. So what these guys will do is they will, they will like show up and they'll be like, hey, can I leave some stuff here? Cause I've left stuff at people's house. And they've had been like, hey, can you come get your stuff? And you know, like the same way our parents um, I'll say my parents, um, as somebody who I have never owned a home and I've moved so much, you know, um, my stepmom and my mom have left, I've had, I've left stuff in their house and it's annoying, but you know, because they're my parents, they kind of like tolerated that crap. But if you date these men, they will literally treat you like the parents that, you know, should just have to deal with their stuff. Even that grizzly man, y'all remember I did videos on the grizzly man, that dude who got his girlfriend eaten by a bear up in Alaska. That man is a classic example of everything I talk about. And he, you know, but when I did even more research into him, he had all these women in his life that were like taking care of him. And, and, and he was keeping his stuff at their place. Like, I swear to God, even these like lone wolf hobos still exploit women somehow. They will always find a woman to exploit even if they're a lone wolf. I promise you, there is a woman in the shadows enabling him, giving him money, letting him park his, van or truck in her uh, driveway or let keeping his winter gear in her storage unit or her uh not her storage unit in her house or her storage unit if she can't fit it in her house or in her garage I can't tell you like please if you know what i'm talking about if you've ever lived in ski town or any of these mountain towns or have dated one of these men you know what i'm talking about right they will just like the same way they feel entitled to our bodies and our time and our labor they also feel entitled to our space and just invading our space with all their crap. Because when you live in a van or a truck like I did, you can only have so many things. And so sometimes you just wanna, you know, get rid of that stuff. 
Now, some people might mail it home to their parents, but men usually find a woman they can keep that stuff at. And then, and then they'll go on a dating app and be like, cool, I can get laid and maybe even cooked for and get a little free therapy, all of that in one, and play, find a place to park my van. Like, eh. I am telling you, like, these hobos, no, no bounds. One of my hobo friends, because again, I lived in a world of like these, of like this kind of nomadic stuff. And a lot, we lived in our cars because we weren't getting paid enough to actually afford places to live. Well, some people were trust funders and so they had whatever, endless resources. Um, but those of us uh, who, you know, didn't have our parents funding any of that, um, we just had to figure out ways we would help each other out, you know, like if someone needed a place to park or put their gear, whatever, it was like an equal exchange. But the way men do this is so different. And, and, and when, when there isn't a, a woman to exploit, they'll find like a really nice guy to exploit. One of my friends, one of my friends, he's just a classic Peter Pan syndrome, just won't grow up and it's all cute until you're in your thirties, you know, like it's because he's so cute. Like he's good looking and he's just so playful and everyone loves like a vulnerable, playful personality, but not when you're like exploiting people and their space while doing that and asking for endless favors and just refusing to grow up and take responsibility. And this dude, like he left his vehicle while he traveled, you know, in a backpack for a while at my friend's house, who was a guy. Um, and this guy was so generous and he's so sweet. And he has just opened his home to so many people like us who are constantly on the move, following the work, having layover days. You know, I can't tell you how many times between courses when I was working in the desert, he would let me and some of our, my friends who were working on the same course in Joshua Tree go and stay at his place and shower and eat with him and do our laundry. Like, and it's just kind of a, a karmic thing, you know, you give and you take, you know, like it, it, it was just like a really great community, but the really entitled men will literally just exploit anybody. And this guy left his vehicle at my friend's place for like years. And he was like, bro, can you just please come get this thing? You know, cause what is he going to do with it? They will literally just leave a whole car in your place and never come back for it. And then and, and, and until they're ready for it. Now I have had so many people help me out along the way. And so I'm not saying that I, I haven't done this and that women don't do this, but you know, women usually offer something in exchange. When what I mean by that is we bring with us community, um, shared moments, we cook with them, like whatever. And I'm sure I have probably not given back at times. But when men do this, they, they want a woman's body. Like, can you imagine this arrangement that she was just talking about? A dude being on a dating app and being like, I don't want anything serious, but can I move in with you essentially for three weeks and play boyfriend and get boyfriend privileges without any commitment whatsoever and probably in eating this or doesn't know how to do this stuff, like really has nothing to offer whatsoever. But you know, he's, he's fun and he's adventurous and he's a free spirit. I mean, I am a Sagittarius. I am like the most Sagittarius Sagittarius that I know. I am like the, I'm a cliche Sagittarius in terms of I lived in my truck for five years and then I lived, like I literally just, ah, dust in the wind. I understand that some people are just, you know, more nomadic and whatever. But like when men do this, it is usually at the, the price is women. Women enable this because as a woman, anytime I have stayed with men, not every time, but many times because they're so transactional in terms of they only do things if they get something in return, not all of them that they, they, so many men ruin friendships with me. Because they're like, hey, you can stay at my place. And they know who I am. They know how I am. They know that I'm a nomad. I camp out. And they've even done that themselves. But once they get a place and they offer me a place to stay, I wrote an article about it for the Huffington Post. You know, they're like, oh, you're staying here? Now you owe me your body. When I was couch surfing all over, and I've talked about this before, couch surfing is supposed to be an exchange of culture. It's supposed to be, it's not bed surfing, but the men on that app turned it into bed surfing. They're like, yeah, I'll host you but I'm just gonna you know, shoot my shot. For a vulnerable woman who doesn't speak the language, doesn't know the town, this is literally her hotel. How easy do you think it is for her to say no to that? You know, so do not let these hobos park in your driveway. Do not hold any of their stuff. Definitely don't sleep with them if they're playing the long game. They're parasites.